Let's get down to the real business of taking care of the people. We can't have a testimony without a test. And we are being tested whether we have courage enough, conviction enough, people power enough to stand up and do what is right for ourselves and generations yet unborn. Come on. Now to my progressive sisters and brothers, it is not enough for us to be right. We got to win some elections. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because politics, and I know we an emotional group and that's all right, baby, we feel deep. But politics, is the art of the possible. Politics is about who has the power and how they wield that power. It is not enough for us to be right on the issues. We have to win elections. We have to take back the power and then use the power on behalf of the people and not for our own selves. Hello, Portia. I am so happy to have you here on, on the Nina Turner Show on the Real News Network. How you doing? I'm doing great. Portia is from Chillicothe in Ross County in Ohio. You are an activist, Portia. And I know a lot of people saw you a lot last year fighting <laughs> and feeling the burn for Senator Bernie Sanders as he was running for president of the United States. What made you get involved in his campaign effort? Because for the last 50 years of my life, I've been fighting for the people. And I watched Bernie Sanders way back when he was mayor of Burlington because, In he, Vermont. because yeah. he was green. He wanted to save our environment. So that's been a passion of mine all my life. Yeah. It's like, who is this fellow? What's he doing? So you've been familiar with him for a long, long time. time. And okay. then when I really keyed on in on Senator Sanders is when Senator Sanders was running for the Senate, and I knew that if he didn't caucus with the Democrats, we could really be in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so I was on needles and pins with that, and then just watching and, and getting more and more interested in this man, this, this white fella from Vermont who who got arrested yeah. way back. Did you he know? He was a college student. Yeah, and one yeah. of the very first sit-ins ever in the United States of America because he was fighting back for the white. He was a white man fighting back for the brown and black people right. in Chicago and across this country. Yeah. And that's been a passion of mine as well. So everything that Bernie was doing, and I really mean that, everything that I know of that he was doing were things that I had been fighting for. Mm -hmm. Union mm -hmm. strong, getting out there and walking the talk. Yeah. We fast forward, we're here at the People's Summit right here in Chicago, and you're here among 4,000 other activists and people who have a consciousness. What, what brings you to the People's Summit? And then we're going to talk about your Ohio Progressive Alliance, but what brings you here this what year? What brings me here is because it's a part of moving the revolution forward. It's a part of doing more than Russia, Russia, Russia. Yeah. It's a part of bringing people together who are like-minded, who love each other, who are wrapping our arms around each other and saying, we're still here 12 months later, by God, and we ain't going anywhere, and we will not yield. Now, how are we going to put our feet on the ground tomorrow. We're having, I think this is like a revival. Yeah, I like that. I've been calling it a family reunion, but you've been calling it a revival. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You know, I'm keynoting uh, on Sunday, yes. so I am definitely going to call it a revival, oh, which brings me to, so you have taken this passion of yours that really has been there all along, but you were able to take it to a next level in supporting Senator Bernie Sanders. And as you said, here we are one year later and you are involved in so many things. You have an organization you're one of the founders of, which is Ohio Progressive Alliance. Tell me a little bit about that alliance and what some of the goals are. Okay, I, I need to preface it with the fact that I organized Appalachians Rising. Yes, you did. I was gonna get to that, but, oh, okay, you, but, that, but, but Appalachian sure goes that, first. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. And so, I organized Appalachians Rising back in the fall, and uh, you know the Trump deal came down, and people were feel fearful and not knowing what their world was going to be like, and particularly brown and black people, people of the Muslim faith. And so, our very first event was a Love Unity rally. Yeah. And we were telling the people of our community and the people who came to our community 
these are our folk yeah. and we will protect them. Yeah. But it was through love. It yeah. wasn't, it was love. And so to help build up, I, had, I have a friend in Ross County whose child is, uh, her father is from the Middle East and she looks very much, yeah. you know, and she was afraid to go to college. Wow. So we needed that strength and lifting within our own community. Yeah. Then we moved into the sister, had a sister's march. In Chillicothe, if you get 50 to 75 people, that is a huge turnout. We had over a thousand people in the, in the streets oh of Chillicothe, Oh my goodness, Ohio. during the women's march, which was the largest march in history. And we made history in Ross County. Yeah, that is a beautiful so, thing. And I've been an activist in my town where I was born and raised and still live. I've never seen that many people turn out. 27 counties in Ohio were there, Nina. Seven states were there. I know for sure two of them, Pennsylvania and West Virginia, people were actually driving in their cars to get to us. Yeah. The other folks may have been passing through. They may have been visiting friends. We don't know because we couldn't get to them. But there's a synergy. I mean, basically what you're saying that there is an awareness out there yes. among the people, hashtag stay woke. You got and people are awake. Absolutely. And I know that in some of our past conversations when you talk about, because I remember seeing you put this out on social media and, and I thought how wonderful, just even the term Appalachia's rising. And I remember you inviting even people who actually voted for Mr. Trump. Absolutely. Why did you do that? Because I personally know people who I have lived with all my life in terms of my community. Uh -huh. And I love them, Nina. They voted, but they voted. They are my people. Ross County was one of the counties that went for Mr. Trump in Ohio. Yes. Right? He won 70% of the vote in 30 counties. So we have 88 counties in the state right. of Ohio. He won 70% of the vote out of 30 counties, and your county was one of those. How is it that you can resist some of the push that's coming from some people on the left to just write off people who voted for Mr. Trump? How do I resist it? What I tell them is common sense tells me, knowing how we win elections is we reach out to people and we hold them in with love and understanding and kindness. I had people that I have known all my life tell me, look me in the eye and say, I'd have voted for your guy if the DNC didn't screw him. Wow. And so they were angry. They were not happy with Hillary. They didn't trust Hillary, just like I didn't trust Hillary. And the only reason I voted for in the end is because the KKK endorsed Trump. And I felt like I needed to push all that aside for my country because the KKK could not be in the White House, and unfortunately it is. But as I talk to people, I know one thing, they care. So you see, because I want to make sure we clear this up, Mr. Trump, as far as we know, is not a member of the KKK. Well, I know that his parents were. But, but he is not a member of the KKK. I don't know. I said, as far as we know, right? Okay. Because I want to be fair okay, here. Okay, but what I know is Steve right. Bannon represents, maybe I a should lot of say people, white race. A lot of people believe that, but I got to be, okay. I got okay. to be fair. Sorry, Absolutely. I want to push back on that just yeah. a little bit. But I guess the premise of what I'm asking you, because it takes a lot that you decided to, to put out an olive branch, if yeah. you will, two people who are, some are your neighbors, some are your friends, some are even strangers, but they live in your community, who decided for whatever reason that they wanted exactly. to vote for Mr. Trump. I mean, that's a really big deal, and I guess your hope was to, to try to unite based on what people have in common. Yeah, and going back to your question about how do we push back against people who say forget them. Yeah, and also people who call them, because I've seen some, and I'm sure because you're on yes. social media too, you know, writing them off or saying you get what you deserve. Every yeah. time Mr. Trump pushes a bad policy, they'll say to people like that, you get what you deserve. How is it for you that you have decided to use your organization to say, no, I, I'm going to seek to understand, as Stephen Covey once said, seek first to understand and, yes. and then to be understood. Why are you doing that? Well, first of all, I was raised to follow the golden rule, Nina. And the golden rule says I do unto others as I would have them to do unto me. And so that is my core. Yeah. It's not about necessarily a religion, but that's my core. Yeah. And so the folks who are going to suffer 
They don't deserve what's coming down. They believed that Donald Trump would help them get jobs. They believed they had to hang on to something because, the, in my opinion, they, those votes were out of desperation. Uh -huh. You look at West Virginia, Bernie pulled all 44 counties in the primary, and West Virginia went Trump. Why? Because they heard jobs. Yes. So I'm reaching out for lots of reasons, but I care about the folks. They're hungry, too. And how is that going? For, can you give us one example? So, so some of the people that you talk to on a regular basis basically said they voted for Mr. Trump, not just because they the problem with the primary, you know, let's put that out of the way, but they really did believe that he was going to help bring jobs to the community. And even yeah. if they didn't, their hearts wanted to because they're desperate, they're hungry. Yeah, I understand. I mean, when I say hungry, they're hungry for yes. food. Their babies are not right. being fed nutrition. But going forward to, past that is that if we want to win elections, we need to reach out, not close in. Do you think that some of the people who voted for Mr. Trump in 2016 are, are, are reachable? Absolutely. When you look at Ross County and you compare the statistics between the 2008 campaign with Obama to 2012, 2012 yeah. out of the all 88 counties in Ohio, yes. we didn't take it for Obama in the county, yes. but we increased the percentage votes more you in the Ross margins. County. We yeah. are not a red county. Okay. We are a, a swing. swing county, yeah. just like the state of Ohio. Ohio yes. is not red. Ohio is not Trump territory. Yes. They can say it till the moon drops out of the sky. Ohio is a state that wants to thrive. And so do the Trump voters, and so do the Hillary voters, and so do the people that didn't stay Bernie at cracks home. everybody. We all just want to thrive, and we want to go to bed at night knowing that my babies are going to do better than me, and that we're going to push that prosperity forward through the generations. But I got to commend you for it. As soon as I saw it, I thought it was wonderful. And actually what you're doing when you called me up to talk about how do we bridge the urban-rural divide. Yes. It reminds me of what Reverend Jesse Jackson was trying to do in the 90s when he was traveling the country, talking to urban, people who live in urban areas and talking to people in rural areas to, to say to us, we have more in common and let's work on those things that we have yes. in common. So now we move from, and, and you still have your Appalachians rising, but you have taken that a step further with the Ohio Progressive Alliance. In our remaining moments here, I want to talk about Mobilize 88. Yes. So 88 counties in the state of Ohio, you decided along with some other organizers, because it takes teamwork to make the dream work, to really try to pull in people from all 88 counties. You're doing a big conference in July. Why are you doing that? Well, Bernie, Bernie passed the baton to us last year, didn't he? And he said, this revolution isn't about me, it's about you. And he gave us some serious challenges. And one of the most important ones he gave us is said, run for office. And so our goal is to mobilize the progressive movement across Ohio into other states. Yes. And focusing on not only Appalachia, but rural, connecting rural with urban in every count, every state in our country has a rural and urban, yes. and we've got to connect those voices, because just like we said a minute ago, we all really want the same thing, but we have to learn how to talk to each other, yes. and we need to stop, like I, I love it, go hard on the issue, soft, soft on the on purse, people. that's just yeah. it. So we're bringing folks together on the first anniversary of the DNC in Philly, that's a very significant date, and we need to claim the power that we had. So many people were so sad about what happened, I am too, but let's talk about the positive. What we did is break history in this country like nothing's ever happened Absolutely. in my lifetime anyway. And so we need to take whatever people's emotions are and help them understand that you've got to put your feet on the ground. And we've got to help them understand what that means. So we're bringing them together, and thank God you are going to be available. Looking forward to, to it. I am so excited because our lineup of leadership are all powerful black women. black women. So don't you tell me, Democratic Party, that the black women in my country aren't leaders. Don't tell me you can't do it. You're not doing it because you're racist. Well, we've never won. I mean, they've run well, some black they've women, never, but, they've never but, but elected no one them. is elected. Right? Absolutely. But Portia, I just want to thank you because you are what leadership looks like. You're putting together a coalition and you deliberately sought out black women. Yes. Portia, thank you so much for your leadership and we will fight on. I'm Nina Turner and you're watching the Nina Turner Show on The Real News Network. 
You know, resistance is really good, but we have to take that resistance to action because anybody can put the problems out. Anybody can talk about the challenges, but it takes a little more to go deeper and to be able to talk about the collective solutions, the things that will move us to action so that we really get to see and feel the change that is needed to advance our cities, our states, and this nation. If you believe in the mission, subscribe. If you believe in the cause, donate. If you believe in the change that we are pushing here at The Real News Network, we need you to watch and to share The Nina Turner Show.